Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome to another episode of Farming Simulator 17. We're in Goldcrest Valley, and we need to do some fertilizing. Now before we do that, let's pop in here and take a peek at what's going on. We've got... Let's see, these guys are fertilized. These two could use one more round, 11 and 12. But I'm pretty sure we have jumped over to the next phase of uh, growth. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if that green is that bar or that bar. To me, it feels like it's right in between. But uh, it looks darker, but I think it's because it's contrasting to the, the orange lying around the border there. But we're going to give this one a try and see what happens. So I'm pretty sure it's ready. Oh, back out so I can see where I'm going. Let's grab the sprayer. There's nothing I can do with the weeders. The only thing, the only option we have is the sprayer right now. A little further. Well, that's not what I wanted, but it'll do. Something like that. Now, where is the... Going this way. There we go. And I need to fill it. Luckily, we picked up a bunch of these. Let's see, is there a symbol that pops up when it's close enough? There isn't. So you just gotta give it a try. It's not like these guys that have a, a lid that opens up. This one, you just gotta hit the R and see if that number starts going up. And boy, it is. Okay. It'd be nice if they had some kind of a little meter or gauge on the, uh, the fertilizer tank. You know when it's half full. This guy over here, I guess I could have started at any end. And this little tractor here is plenty big enough to do this job. Alright, let's start the unfolding. Give us a clue where we need to be. <clears throat> it feels like not long ago that we were doing this. <laughs> Alright, so there it is. Something like that. And let's take that height. I'm on a hill, so I can't get down low enough. There we go. Let's go up to about like that. All right. Cruise control's at 13. Yeah, I can work with that. So we want 3 and B. Just like that. Or in my case, thumb button number 1. All right. This time we're going to go ahead and let it overspray a little bit so we don't get any... Tiny gaps of no fertilizer, like we did over in field 11. Quite a few of those. So I've been watching Vapa's Kingdoms and Castles. And that is turning out to be kind of a fun game. It's still an alpha. There's a lot of work left to do on the game. But what they have got done so far is a very encouraging, very interesting game. Kind of a combination between uh, all the... Uh, the rules of the old stronghold games and a mixture of banished and and uh, and whatnot. It's it fits a channel like this. He and I both bought into it. Nikos might have as well. I brought it up to all you know to both of them and uh, never really heard who bought what. There were some of those games that uh, um, what do you call that when you're like a GoFundMe, but it's not that's not the right term. But uh, crowdfunding the uh, Oh, it's hard to tell where I've sprayed. Look right there. Crowdfunding the game to get it, uh, um, to get the funding to build it. And so there are all kinds of different levels to buy into, from ten dollars all the way up to hundreds of dollars. And at the seventy-five dollar mark, you could have got your name in the game. And it might be kind of fun to have a, a noble rambler running around in there, but uh, I won't even pay that much for a AAA title. So. 75 is a lot of money, so <laughs> couldn't do that. But I do uh, have the alpha, or the the beta reserved, so I'll be getting into that probably this coming fall when they uh, when they hit their their beta. Right now they're in alpha, and Vapa is having a lot of fun with that, and his channel is growing fast as a result. I think that uh, probably the main factor right now he is just going like gangbusters. 
So, that's good. I, I missed. Get back here. I'm talking and not getting my button. I'll scrape the ground there. Right about there. Gotcha. <laughs> but it does look like a fun game. So I can't wait till uh, I'm round two. So round two beta keys will go out and I'll get to jump into it. Now, I waited until beta. It was a lot more expensive to go alpha and beta. But my thought was that as they add more things to the game, there's a higher chance they're going to break your, your, uh, your save file. And I tend to, to pause the game and talk about it and explore and expand. And, and I can go, you know, five episodes. <laughs> the amount of time that Viva can, can wipe out, you know, in, in one episode. So it would have driven me insane to have gotten just to where it was getting interesting and have to start over and over and over. So I think I'd rather, uh, I'd rather watch his. And it's busy right now. It's the spring. My business is, is busy uh, with uh, tax refund season here. And a lot of people are buying the sort of stuff that I sell. So it uh, means I've got to do a lot more work to keep uh, getting the store stocked. So I'm going to be gonna be busy until probably May. So bringing on a new series is tough. I've been real close several times to starting up Transport Fever. Finally got it to work and record just fine. But I don't know that I can commit to it time-wise right now. You know, I'd get four or five episodes out, and I might not be able to get back into it for a week. And I'd rather not do that to a series. I like this every day to every other day stuff, and I've only got time to do that to two series right at the moment. A 30-minute episode in the morning and 30-minute in the evening. Keep uh, two of them going. So I'm trying real hard to get RimWorld worked through, get some gold, get the research going, get the ship, and get everybody off planet. Then maybe dive into another game and then get back into RimWorld current version, which by then probably be 18. Uh, 17 may be coming out here pretty quick. It's talking about it being just a bunch of bug fixes for 16, and 18's were a monster load of new content will probably come out. But that's fine. This is fun. Rimworld is fun. Even though it's three uh, alphas back, it isn't so much the content, it's the story that it's telling. That's really the fun part of the way that I do Rimworld. So I don't do it in a, in a crash pace to cram in as much and fast as possible and make it chaotic and crazy and that's that's how it's usually done on YouTube and, and it works I mean it, it certainly gets a lot of attention and a lot of views but not quite my style that is going to leave a little strip wouldn't you know it hmm. we'll see about that so what to do <clears throat> I'm already almost 10 minutes into this. Wow. These half-hour episodes do have their disadvantage. I feel like I'm not really accomplishing much anymore in an episode. It feels strange for me because I used to get in so much content into each episode. But then it takes so long to do all of the, the post-recording steps. So there's definitely the, uh, the advantage of being able to put out two games in a day instead of one game a day and keep you know, doing them every other day. So we'll, we'll keep trying this for a while. But let's buzz over here. And we'll just do this little jogging thing we've done before. Oh, hit the tree. Stop, stop, stop. So much for cruise control. Gotta stop and think about this one now. Uh, let's fold up. I'm not going to clear that base. There we go. Unfold. Let me have that problem all the way through here. I'm not going to have the flexibility. I'm not. Alright, then let's just do it this way. 
Might be able to do like I did in Field 11. Alright, so three and thumb. There we go. So we're just going to waste a little bit. But I can see me crashing into these trees all the way down the length. Could cut them all out. They make it. They make the map look good. I don't want to take all the trees out. Just where it's really strategic. And none of these are, are that critical. But we'll fertilize these two fields. And... Let me think about that. I know we need. We want to go get some mowing done over at 11. It's probably the next step. Not enough time to get that into this episode, but we can probably just give it a, a good start. And next episode deal with whatever was accomplished. Now I've got half a tank of fertilizer left, and I think 11 is quite a bit bigger. So... Let's go fill up. point of checking prices once in a while from here on out. We've seen these, the pattern, really, neither, none of these numbers have changed. Hmm. Whoa. That just changed before my eyes. <laughs> a third one in the 1400s, just like that. Um, I'm especially wanting to see the sugar beets. Now, green symbol up that tells me the price is rising here. So this has hit a bottom and it's rising. So you'll be able to tell when something has hit its peak. It's green, but suddenly it will get a down arrow saying it's going down from here. This is your last chance at this price. Hmm. Any wool, we want to definitely keep an eye on that. I want to see a green arrow soon. and I want to see that thing heading up and, until it peaks. Then we'll bring all the wool in, maybe on a... Uh, um, on the on the trailer over there and dump it all at the same time get as much forward as we can but let's do try to keep track of the prices and I just realized that uh, let's see my time has been left at one let's get or do I want to do that you know what let's let's leave it at one it's, the lighting is decent enough until like 9 o'clock at night. We're still at uh, almost well, 5 minutes to 7. Well, through the night, these two fields are going to uh, trigger to harvest. So first thing in the morning, we're going to have to do with harvesting. Huh. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll get it sprayed. We don't really have a deadline, I don't believe, on grass. At least, there never was... Well, we don't have plant withering on anyway, so we don't. But um, with Farming Simulator 13 and 15, it just stayed grass. Even when you did a field. Although this one does react differently with the, uh, the real planting stage of putting the seed in. Last time, the other versions, they just simply turn into grass like this upon uh, planting it. So, I don't remember there even being a growth stage. It just immediately went to grass, if I remember right. Let's see, I want to... How did we do this? It didn't work starting at this end with this sprayer. Let's start at this end over here and to see how this works out this way. It may be that we'll work from this end here and we'll work from the far end over there and leave both little strips together in the center. 
and be the fastest way to to uh, deal with with fixing that. Might be the the tactic. In fact, I'm wondering about running the perimeter. That's a different idea. Let's think about that. Anyway, three and spray. So we'll have two fields to harvest. Next field will be one step out of sink. So it'll be the following stage. We got this guy to mow. And we have to decide what to do with that. I think we're still going to end up tethering part of it and getting some more hay bales. Don't really need any grass bales. So just hay bales. It wouldn't hurt to do one round of silage bales too. Just to have those stored. And everything else can... Let me think about that. Everything else can go into the silage pits, one or the other, except leaving maybe a partial loading wagon full of grass. Use that to, to feed with easier. At least the cattle. The sheep have a choice of hay or grass, but the cattle have one category that is only grass. I'm not sure how interchangeable that truly is. This is doing something, right? I'm just sitting here talking, but... I'm not entirely sure. Okay, let's find out. The contrast was not that, that stark. We ran this and nothing happened. This one did. Interesting. This one obviously did go to the next stage. Does the grass have a different growth rate? Because they were done at the same time before. That's really interesting. Okay, so we're not doing that right now. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, I can kind of see a line in there, but I think I'm imagining it. Must be um, 89%. Now nah, we'll take it back. It may take really the, the full load to do this. Don't know how much is left over. This is straw. We've got to get back to that someday. So I want to top this thing off before I get to work on the grass again. So I guess we're waiting for the next stage on that one. Okay. What do we do for another 10 minutes? <laughs> Uh, we need to get a bucket over to the cattle area so we can clean them up. Or we need to get the Manitou back over to this area to clean it up. So we have a little bit of maintenance issues to do. Otherwise, what else is there to do? Kind of running through the ideas my mind here. We could play with the conveyor belts just to see how that works. I've never actually tried them before. That might be kind of fun. I know one of them you actually hop in and drive. Maybe that you do that to all of them. I'm not sure. I have seen one on someone else's video. Let this let's top this guy off and set him aside. Probably just leave him on the tractor. It's most likely going to happen. Uh, that's this bay here. Oops. Let's try the other direction. There we go. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> that was trippy. Um, let's just head over here and goof with this. How would we do it? This guy, I believe, is meant to be dropped into the pile. And he dumps into this guy, which once he's set up, he starts off at this height right here. And that's how they latch together. No. Yeah? That's a ball hitch. 
Hmm. So, oh, I'm zooming again. I will always do that in this game. Let's E this thing. Yep, I am one with the conveyor belt. I cannot move, though. So that doesn't work that way. Um, okay, what does the F1 give me? Start engine? <laughs> um, <clears throat> battery powered? Um, yeah. I think there's little solar cells embedded in the conveyor belt. That must be it. Uh, full belt X. Okay, that's kind of fun. Um, unload here. Otherwise, that seems to be it. Okay. Well, let's drive you mysteriously over to the sugar beets, formerly known as sweet potatoes. And how best? Whoa. That was funky. So that tells me we've got quite a, a radius from the end here. Now, can I just kind of... I can. So this is actually going to catch a good amount of it. Alright, let's hop out of there, grab this guy, jump into here, start the engine. Rum, 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 rum. Here we go. That means the engine's still running on that one. I didn't turn it off. Let's unfold first. What does unfold mean? Unfold is the wheels. Okay. So, let's see what our options are here. Hire worker. Really? Fold belt, unload here, change angle, why? I... Okay. Otherwise, we're going to do this. Now, oh! What is the change angle 25%? Does it have to do with the V that's forming in there? It's not slowly moving. I don't know what's changed that V. That V wasn't there before, was it? Oh, well, maybe it was. What is the 45 degrees? Okay, well, let's just continue playing here. There. That one shoots out that way. I want to zoom out more. Like that. What is the change angle? I'm hitting that Y. I'm not seeing any animation. Is there something there that's just not obvious? Okay. The only thing I'm... What is 20%? It's not the, the height. That's my uh, holding the left mouse button and lifting. So that's not the change angle. Take it all the way to the top and even extend this all the way out. Okay. Now, if I hit change angle... What moves on this? I wonder if that doesn't happen, doesn't actually move until the animation begins. That could be it. So let's drive this guy into here. Or maybe it has to do with the connection point on this guy. Let's see. So if we do this, now if I change the height... No. So how do these guys connect to each other? Toggle, unload, fold belt, hire worker, stop engine. Why? Well, I'm not sure, but we continue to drive this in. We'll get the animation here. I still don't know what change angle is. So while this is happening... I don't seem to be doing anything with the change angle here. So if you guys know what the change angle is, let me know. But, meanwhile, I'm trapped. Meanwhile, we, we can just run a, uh, a trailer over the top of this. Uh-huh. I don't know if this guy can load off the ground on its own. I suspect not. Boy, I want to zoom up in the air. Um... That didn't do it. There we go. Let's grab a tractor. Um, this guy will do. 
and grab a trailer. And we'll just we'll just play with this. Otherwise, I think next episode I will begin tomorrow morning. We'll pick up the eggs, and we'll get to work on something. Mowing, fertilizing, harvesting. We'll find something to do. I want in here. In fact, if I can move my finger, I want the headlights on. And move my finger again. We can see exactly where we're backing up. What's that look like inside? Oh, wow. Lots of light. And this is the tractor for all of its disadvantages that smoke stack right in your face. You can look down and see where your hitch is. I really like that in this tractor. I wish more of them did that. I think some of the bigger ones do, some of the more expensive ones do. That is uber bright. Let's go down to our low beams. But in at the Westbridge Hills map of Farming Simulator 13 and 15, there were three bays with wood chips and sugar beets and potatoes. Kind of looked like that. And it had a conveyor sticking out of the back end of all three. And all you did was you just drove up and assuming that you lined up right, that is really high. Let's pop out of there and that's too high to even guess. Alright, let's take you down like so. And there. Oh, trapped inside again. Alright. So you get out let's see, I'm gonna back up a little more. Get out like so. And it'll just start filling you up. So these are just already part of the map. And they would fill you up if, when you drove under them. So you had to be careful to drive under the right one. Didn't just run the, the whole run behind the, uh, the, you know, the shed roof there and snag potatoes instead of wood chips or whatever. Wood chips, I guess, would have been 15. 13 didn't have wood chips. And 15, I think, only did at the end with the gold edition, if I recall. This takes quite a while to fill. We're not going to actually go and sell it, but I wanted to, wanted to experiment with this. Um, while that's doing that, is this emptying the pile right here? It is. You can see it all going down. That's kind of neat. What we might do, I want to zoom out again, is drive this guy a little further back in, right into that low spot there. I wish I can get it to shoot out the back end here. We fill from the back side. That's that way the equipment could just sit out there. That kind of what I want to do when we do finally start doing this for real. Oh, is it ever going to end? I would want to do something similar to what was at the Westbridge Hill. So the green guy right there, just sitting right here, shooting out the top. No, he doesn't have the height. He's still going to take two pieces. Yeah. So, okay. Somehow, him in here and the other... This guy out here is shooting out over the top. Out of the top of all three. And then we can just dump into one of these. And whenever we're ready, we just fill it up. Let's grab this guy. And my engine started. It's still running. Okay. We're going to do... Something like try to drop him down into that little slot down there. He does not want to. There we go. I see he's kind of stuck on the on the grade of the side of the hill there. Okay, try turning this way. It's like there's an invisible wheel somewhere making a, a turn. There we go. There. And turn in. Well, once he starts going uphill, he will not turn anymore. He's completely ignoring my, 
request to turn. So we got to get the front wheels correct. Or, um, well, back here. Now swing it in. So something like that. All right. So that kind of buried in there. If I hit the X, does that just disappear? Nope. We'll leave them up. Okay. So that can go there. This guy. Um. Interesting. Let's. Whoa. Front is back and back is front. Let's bring this guy in and send him over the the concrete wall there. Now forward is back and back is forward. All right. I'm not going to clear that. So let's go and and right is left and left is right. Ooh, this is hurting the brain. Okay. Can I? I can do it this way better. It's acting as if it's already... Can, well, do I not want to do that? Well, let's see if we can make this turn. It's acting like it's connected to a tractor. So it's... Oh, there is a tiny little wheel in this one. Was there in that one, too? There is. You can see it down there. Oh, I did not see that before. So this guy... Kind of... Whoa. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to have to... What is my forward now? Am I stuck? I'm stuck. There we go. Let me see if I can work it out of here. <laughs> okay, well, in between episodes, I'm going to fix this. <laughs> And uh, we'll get that uh, that figured out. I want to have the red thing sticking out over the wall here. And then it's moving over there, isn't it? Yeah. And then I turn the engine off, and I'm assuming it will not automatically load every time I accidentally drive a tipper underneath it. Yeah. So this has been Noble Rambler, leaving, leaving this episode in a mess. But... Um, yeah, I'll catch you next time, folks, and we'll do more fun things. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.